Good afternoon. I am Larry Aila here on the Art and Proud African LGBT YouTube channel in Regent's Park, London. I'm here with two of my friends. Uh, one is from, is from Bangladesh and the other is from Cameroon. I will start uh, with them introducing themselves. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hello, my name is uh, Nadine, a proud gay man from Bangladesh. Uh, uh, I'm a proud member of uh, Out and Proud African LGBTI group. And uh, being a member of Opal, it's like a family. It doesn't matter, you know. It's a happiness, sadness. You, we are all together, especially during coronavirus, COVID-19 period. We supported each other, and especially where I was struggling as well to see, you know, some of my friends. But we almost every week, Saturday, we were doing Zoom meeting where we share each other problem and difficulties, and you know, they they supported us very, you know, whatever we needed. Very thankful for Opal. Yo, my name is Vebe James Fanso. I'm from Cameroon, Great. proud gamer from Cameroon. Uh, actually, I'm happy to be to be part of uh, the Opal Out and Proud uh, African LGBT, and uh, you know, being a family in Opal have uh, brought uh, a lot of positive uh, impact on me. Yeah. Uh, the support, uh, the moral advice, uh, yeah, yeah, makes me feel at home. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, being from Africa and Asia, I know most of the countries, uh, well, I'm from Nigeria, and uh, the challenges being a gay man from Lagos, I know I can't be, I can't express myself yeah. openly. Yeah. What's the, your experience being a gay man from Bangladesh? What is it you want to tell us briefly? It's very difficult, basically more than 90% of people are Muslim in my country. And it's uh, in a Muslim culture and in my country as well, in Bangladesh. Being gay, people think it's a dirty, it's a sinful, and it's a shame. And you cannot be out and you cannot do anything publicly. Even being gay, you have to hide in the closet. You cannot wear what you want to. You cannot hold your partner, the person you love, hold hand in public. You cannot walk through the street holding hand of your partner. You need to be very discreet and to know, sh not to show any affection to the same sex gender. So even being gay in Bangladesh, so I was always stressed, fear and panicking just to make sure, you know, I'm able to hide myself. Nobody would find out my sexuality. If they find out, my life would be in danger. And But coming here, you only have one life, you know, why hide in the closet, why stay behind the door? Just choose love, mm. because it's more important to show and express your feelings to the person you love, because if you die tomorrow, you don't get it. So why you hide and why you just shame, just, you know, accept yourself. If you accept yourself, the rest of the world accept you. Well, what's your experience being a gay man from Cameroon? Uh, Tell us. Apparently, uh, Thank you, uh, Salar, for giving me this uh, opportunity to express, uh, to express myself. Um, being a gay man from Cameroon is, uh, I'll use another word, taboo. All right. It's a taboo. When I talk of taboo, it's uh, some sort of illegal. It is out uh, of uh, the, uh, the the government. The law, the law of the government doesn't accept being a gay man or homosexual being who, who you are. So, uh, there are many situations whereby if you cannot live that free life the way you want to live that free because you will be, you will be afraid that uh, they might kill you, they might harm you. Yeah, so you are not free. So, now, uh, in UK, yeah, I believe I'm living that life that I was not able to live back home because uh, it is acceptable to be a homosexual, a gay man, I'm living a proud life, I'm open, I do what I want, I'm free, without any fear of discrimination. Thank you. 
I just want to chip in a word. I can relate with what both of you are saying. Uh, if it were in Nigeria, yeah. the three of us cannot sit down <laughs> openly like this. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It's that bad. Yeah. And uh, it takes away your, your, your right to, to yeah. live. Yeah. You know, because as a child, you know, back home in Africa, you are, you are taught that yeah. a man-to-man -man relationship yeah. It's a taboo. It's a taboo. Yeah. Like it's a taboo. Yeah. You understand. And you know? There's another stigma, like for example, you know, most people from my country they get married around twenty five age. Yeah. And by when they're thirty, thirty five, they already have a wife, kids Ooh. and a family. And if you're still single, you know, people there's Start a question mark, things. you know, what's going on. How have you coped during this period? I know Art and Proud have been very supportive to um, uh, members, myself and other members, we have already, we are always, you know, having meetings and all those stuff. How have you survived? How have you coped with the coronavirus pandemic? Well, uh, the COVID-19 has brought a lot of negative impacts on my life. Uh, wow. The reason being that uh, before I used to socialize uh, with my family, Opal, okay. having a meeting, going to GAY, socialize, having fun, yeah. you know, supporting each other. Mm -hmm. It has already brought uh, a mental stress in me. Sometimes uh, I sit, I feel as if I have that COVID in me, you know. Wow, sorry to hear that. <laughs> so it brings a lot of stress in me. So, yeah, this one, these are one of uh, the key, key negative points of uh, COVID in me and going to the positive part um, like I said Opal is a family because uh, since we could not make it having a meeting in where we usually have at Dane Street, yeah, 56 Dane Street. The, the family creates a means of communication what they call Zoom okay. Okay. so uh, it brought a positive impact in my life because just supporting what was still there from uh, one uh, of our great leader, Abby, That's good. and uh, some of our own brothers and sisters. You know, so yeah, this hear. brought uh, a, a positive impact in my life as well. Thank you. How have you survived this um, uh, lockdown? and uh, what kind of support have you been able to get? Uh, it's been difficult, especially when, since the moment, you know, late March when the government put the lockdown. I say Opal came, you know, Opal supported, and some of my friends supported me through the lockdown. Uh, so it was very, very helpful for me. And there's a lot of negative impact and positive impact the coronavirus and the lockdown put me in my life. For example, you know, this Saturday was the day I was every week looking forward. Yeah. I was looking forward to, you know, come and meet my friends, Opal family member at 56 Dane Street. But because of coronavirus and uh, lockdown, we can't do it, which make me kind of upset and sad as well because we could have come to 56 in the street, we talk, we, you know, socialize and we go to GAY, we dance with the good music, we have variation of DJ who puts very, very nice music, which will always Saturday night cheer me up, doesn't matter how hard and tough week I have, yeah. you know, that Saturday cheer me up when see, I see my Opal family. But another positive thing this coronavirus showed me doesn't matter how difficult the life is, how many problems we have, doesn't matter what the pandemic is. Opal is strongest family and doesn't matter whatever comes, you know, we stay together. Glad that uh, you are here, you are able to express yourself, you know, the way you want to. Uh, unlike when we were back home, well, this is United Kingdom, uh, there's no reason to, to be in closet. And uh, you guys are inspiration to to others, you know, those who are still in closing. You know, it's good to be open. Anyway, it's nice having you. Thank, thank you very much. Hope thank you, you guys are going to turn up one next week right <laughs> here on this channel. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Yeah.